reading today, March 31st on Tuesday. I want to remind you your book report form is due or filled out to me by Friday. Your book report form is in your language book, so please be sure that you are taking care of that and getting it to me by the end of the day, Friday. You need to go ahead and get those graded, okay? Uh, Tuesday at the zoo, you need that worksheet today. If you've already done it and turned it in to me, that's fine. That's no trouble. Um, I need this, once you finished it, I need a picture sent to me. It's for grade. But if you've already done it and I have it, no problem at all. You don't have to do it again, okay? And you also need your bright side. Uh, we're going to read pages 66 through 72 today. Now, your reading assignments are a little shortened because I want you, when we're finished reading, and you do this worksheet for At The Zoo, that's not a difficult worksheet. I want you to be sure that you're working on your book report, okay? So you'll have all week, five days, to get the book report done. Once you've finished it, give yourself time uh, so that when you finish it, someone can read over it for you, pr uh, proofread it. There's no need to do things and do them incorrectly. Have someone read it. If you need to make corrections, please, by all means, make the corrections and then just have it turned in to me by a picture. It's fine, okay? So, Tuesday at the zoo. And again, if you've done this, it's fine. You can just sit tight for a second. Um, you are going to read the little short paragraph and answer each question with a complete sentence. So please be sure, number one, where did Pam go? Zoo. Mm -mm. This is practice in writing in complete sentences, beginning with a capital letter and ending with punctuation. A who and what did they do? A subject and a verb. Okay, so that's that for you there. Uh, so you have that. We're going to, um, you can hang on to that or you can pause the video and do it. It doesn't matter to me. If you want to pause, go ahead and do that. And then you can pick up with us with Brightside. Okay, so if you're ready for Brightside, we are going to kind of go over this story yesterday. We read um, through it yesterday. We read through um, when he went to uh, the hill and he could see the house that he thought was just absolutely beautiful. You know, he looked on that house and he saw, oh, wow. You know, it is gold. It is beautiful. And he wanted to go to that house. So he goes to this house. And then what does he find out in the end? Hmm. Was it really made of gold? Was it anything special about the house? No. He met a girl there his age. They had an apple. They became friends. And... They sat and talked for a few minutes, and he, you know, he just didn't really understand. He thought that he was going to see this, like, magnificent, beautiful, golden home. And she said, no, let me show you where, where the home you're talking about. And she took him to the hill, and actually, what was he looking at? She looked at his house and thought how beautiful it was, and it was made of gold, and it was absolutely beautiful. So, you know, it was a lesson learned here that, you know, sometimes things may look like, oh, I've got it so bad. I've got this old house and this person lives in a house of gold and it's beautiful and it's diamonds. But it's not really the case. God has asked us to be content with what we have, with what he's given. Sure. I mean, I look at other cars and I think, wow, that would be nice to have that car right there. I like a Challenger. I think they are just awesome cars. And I think, man, I'd love to have that Challenger, a gray one. But I have a great car. Gets me where I need to go and what I need to do. So, you know, it, it's human. It's natural to look at other people and say, man, they live in a house of gold. When actually you find out they're looking at you and saying, you live in a house of gold. So just a good lesson there. And when he went home, who was there? His family. Yeah, and we've learned past couple days, especially in weeks, how precious family uh, and our friends are. So page 65, let's look at the questions. Um, which house had go golden windows? Both, that's right. Um, one perceived that the other one had golden windows. But was it really gold? No, it was the light from the sun that shined. The sun was shining on them and it made a reflection. 
What is the moral of this story? That's right. I always look on the bright side, right? Title of the book. So these are, are stories about things that may not be going so well for these um, characters that we have in these stories, but I always try to make the best out of it. Okay? Um, so let's look to page 66, The Star. I'll give you a little introduction. God gave us the stars for many reasons. They help light the sky at night. They help keep us help us keep track of time. Stars can even guide travelers when they are lost. The author of this next poem can't help but stare at one little star in the sky. Let me see if I can get a... Ethan. Hey, Ethan. Would you read for us on page 66, The Star by Jane Taylor? This is a poem, so would you read the first stanza for us? The Star, Jane Taylor. It's hard to speak this poem and not sing it, isn't it? Because we know the tune to it. When the blazing sun is gone, when he nothing shines upon, then you show your little light, twinkle, twinkle, all the night. Let me get another reader real quick. Let me grab one here. Kylie. Hey, Kylie. So if you'll read the third stanza for us, then the traveler. Thank you, Kylie. In the dark blue sky you keep, and often through my curtains peep, for you never shut your eye till the sun is in the sky. As your bright and tiny spark lights the traveler in the dark, though I know not what you are, twinkle, twinkle, little star. So, nice poem. Um, again, it's, it, you hear that melody of the song in your head as you're reading. So let's look at your questions on page 67. You have the pencil. How many stanzas are in this poem? That's right, you count down, there are five stanzas. What is the meaning of the second stanza? When the blazing sun is gone, he nothing shines upon. Then you show your little light, twinkle, twinkle, all the night. That's right, when the sun is gone, then the stars come. That's right. What is the main idea in the third stanza? Then the traveler in the dark thanks you for your tiny spark. He could not see which way to go if you did not twinkle so. So what does that mean? That's right. He's thankful for the light to be able to see how to travel. It guides his way. If I'm moving too quickly, you can pause to write your answers. Number four, in the fourth stanza, where is the author? In her room, probably in her home. Yep. Um, you know, looking out there. Okay. So let's turn over to page 68. Um, 68 is a play. And oh, I wish we were together. Whenever we can go back, we'll pull out this book and we'll have this play together. Um, dig deeper at the top. This selection is a play. A play is divided into acts, and the acts are divided into scenes. We've done these before. Acts and scenes often change when the character or setting changes. As you read this play, ask yourself what changes from one act to another, what, which characters appear in each act, and why the scene changed. Well, why is the scene going to change? Right, because there's different things happening at different places. You don't want one story at one place. You know, I've sometimes watched a movie and there's like very little change in the scenery. It's like maybe, a, you know, one particular house or, you know, that's, you know, it kind of gets kind of, uh, kind of hard to watch, you know, kind of lose interest. But when it, you know, um, changes to town and then back to the house and then maybe at a different, you know, it keeps your interest. So obviously you want different um, scenes when different things happen and different people. Okay. 
Hickory Dickory and Doc, adapted from L. Frank Baum. This story is based on the poem Hickory Dickory Doc, found in Mother Goose's nursery rhymes. L. Frank Baum, or Baum, decided to turn this and other silly rhymes into lovable and exciting stories. So you have Hickory Dickory Doc, Act 1. So we're going to read a couple of pages here. We would have a narrator. And the narrator kind of gives you kind of an overview of about what's about to happen. They're not really involved in the scene, just kind of giving you a little information. Within the hollow wall of an old brick mansion, away up near the roof, there lived a family of mice. Mama Mouse liked this snug little home because the draft that came through the rafters made it cool in summer, and they were near enough to the chimney to keep warm in wintertime. Besides the Mama Mouse, there were three children named Hickory and Dickory and Doc. And this would be another narrator, but that would be me. Mama Mouse was a brave mouse and knew that it was her duty to find food for her little ones. So she went bravely to work, gnawing through the baseboard that separated the pantry from the wall. It took her some time to do this, for she could only work at night when the cat was fast asleep. Cats away, the mice will play, right? At last, Mama Mouse gnawed a hole through the baseboard large enough for her to get through into the pantry, and then her disappointment was great to find the bread jar covered with a tin pan. Mama Mouse would say, how thoughtless people are to put things where a hungry mouse cannot get at them. Narrator would read, but just then she spied a barrel of flour standing upon the floor, and that gave her new courage, for she knew she could easily gnaw through that. Gathering the children a few crumbs that were scattered about, she ran back into the wall and scrambled up to her nest. Now, scene two would be a different, um, a different act. Something different's happened. And Jillian. Hey, Jill. If you could read um, on page 70, scene two, that narrator one. Thank you, Jill. Be good children, and don't stir out of your nest till I come back. I hope that after tonight, we shall not be hungry for a long time. I shall gnaw a hole at the back of the flour barrel where it will not be discovered. Narrator 2 would say, She kissed each of them goodbye and ran down the wall on her errand. When they were alone, left alone, Hickory wanted to go to sleep again. But little Doc was wide awake and tumbled around, so in the nest that his brothers were unable to sleep. Doc, I wish I could go with Mother some night. It's no fun to stay here all the time. Dickory would say, she will take us when we are big enough. And Doc, well, we're big enough now. And if I knew my way, I would go out into the world and see what it looks like. Hickory said, I know a way out, but Mama wouldn't like it if we should go without her permission. So let me pick another reader here. Harrison. Hey, Harrison. If you could read um, page 71, that last uh, doc there. Thank you. Dickory said, he is right. Let's go, Hickory. Hickory says, well, I'd like a little stroll myself. So if you'll promise to be very careful and not get any, any mischief, I'll take you through the hole that I have discovered. Okay, we're going to stop there, and tomorrow we will pick up with Act 2. So I know that's a short lesson, but you need to take some time. Work on your Tuesday at the zoo worksheet. It's going to be simple. Have someone clip, uh, take a picture of it, send it to me, and then you need to spend some time working on your maple tree book report. That will be a test grade. Yes, it's a grade for reading. Okay, so we're going to um, have our next subject, uh, which will be language.